Knowledge is power, and this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. This is uh, your host today is Kurt Dukach. Uh, Jen- Jen- Jennifer Solis is uh, in Denver, Colorado for the NCIA Association. She's joining us by the phone. We also have uh, Perry Hitchu in uh, studio and Raymond Fletcher and, of course, our producer, Beach. Hey, Jen, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm actually outside a barbecue place smoking out right now. I just finished with the NCIA convention. It was all very exciting, and, and I've been having a lot of fun in Colorado. Ah, g- glad to hear that. Fantastic. So, so did you did you learn a lot today, or what exactly is going on over there? Well, what's going on is it's an it's an industry um, convention, and they just talk about best practices in um, in the cannabis community. Um, there are a lot of vendors also for businesses, and I've been making a lot of connections with those people. But I, I actually, one of my old connections and friends of mine, um, Timothy Tipton is here. He's the chief visionary officer for the Phoenix Tears um, Foundation. And I've known him for over five years. He's one of the industry leaders and the starter and, and then the people that have been on the pulse of Colorado for the longest time. So, yeah, I'm going to um, introduce Timothy. Aloha, Nevada. How are you doing today? No, we're doing good. How are you, Timothy? Excellent. i got to tell you, you know, it's such a blessing to have the sunshine here in the Rocky Mountain State. And an old friend and Jennifer here at the Brothers Barbecue uh, enjoying a nice uh, medicated uh, uh, little bit of uh, blue Hawaiian uh, smoke out here uh, after the uh, all of the hoopla, all of the industry, all of the business of business is over with today. And uh, I got to tell you, I mean, we've got some big news that just came out today. Uh, the Pueblo commissioners in Pueblo, Colorado, have approved uh, to have private cannabis clubs. So I'm uh, my prediction, you know, the Colorado Midnight Riders prediction, uh, I've only been a court expert here in the state for about 12 years now. Uh, but my prediction is, is that the uh, entire state's going to be inundated with private cannabis clubs now that will be uh, not essentially over-regulated uh, and uh, according to the new regulations by these Pueblo commissioners for the county of Pueblo, the criteria that uh, one has to meet in order to have their own private pot club is that they cannot be an owner of a dispensary or <laughs> a uh, non-infused product or other type of license. Uh, uh, entity. So, so when, uh, when you say when you say a private club, are you speaking like a like a speakeasy, or are we talking more like a co-op where that's where people go and get their medication and take it home? No, they they can't purchase the pot, but they can bring in whatever they need. And uh, clearly, the uh, uh, commissioners in Pueblo, anyway, are concerned about uh, you know keeping in compliance with the Clean Air Act. Uh, uh, in terms of indoor, uh, mm-hmm. but they're going to allow vaporization and, uh, and what have you, edibles, uh, you know, to be brought in and consumed at these private clubs. But uh, they're also having a uh, uh, essentially an outdoor patio area for smoking cannabis. And uh, what they've said is, is that we have to have uh, um, fences around the smoking area so that uh, the public uh, cannot actually view uh, someone smoking the joint. But yet, these are the types of clubs. Um, you know, here in Colorado, we've got about, uh, we've got a club up in Nederland. We've got a couple of them here in uh, Colorado Springs. But uh, for the most part, uh, this is an unknown quantity. Uh, private cannabis club, uh, something the state of Washington and California have 
been dabbled with a bit, but suddenly today we get government approval for this. And yeah. it's local government approval. Yeah, so why not? If, if if they allow if they allow bars, they should allow they should allow you know basically the same thing for cannabis. I was just going to ask the same question. Do you do you think this is going to be more like a bar atmosphere where people come in and they have live entertainment and they have food served, or is it going to be more like a more laid back? Well, it's going to be coffee shop kind of vibe. It sounds like it's going to be like an Elks Club, a VFW kind of thing. You know where members go in, you know, and you can socialize with other members. That's what it sounds like a Moose Lodge or something. Something like that. Yeah, what's really fascinating about it is, is because we are such a new industry and in evolution that there are so many different new models that can be developed. Um, you know, myself, I'm sitting in a barbecue right now, and I actually, uh, you know, uh, I, as a uh, about seven months ago, I was named Caregiver of the Year with the Boulder Hospital and uh, George Carl Foundation for my 12 years of volunteer work with the cancer patients. And Congratulations. As I motor scooter down Parker Road and see this this empty Caledonia's barbecue uh, across from the famous Piper Inn that used to be the bar uh, in uh, South Denver that the uh, airplane pilot, when it was a dirt road back there, uh, it's now suburbia, two and a half million people. But back in the 50s and 60s, uh, this was a dirt road, and the Piper Inn was a uh, uh, a bar right at the uh, a short run runway strip that they would have, so these uh, private pilots would come in from Boulder and, and have a drink or what have you, have their little socialization out in the southern Denver area. But this old barbecue place, I mean, it's a large facility, and I, I really, uh, you know, I'm looking forward, being a retired chef, to setting up the Colorado Midnight Riders MQ, not barbecue. We're talking about medicated barbecue. So, uh, you know, I see myself as being completely in the state with regard to our constitutional protections for me to be able to make my own barbecue sauce. And yeah, yeah, you can you can make some pretty good cannabis based barbecue sauce. The sugars in those sauces really, you know, break down the cannabinoids, and you can make some yeah. really great great sauces from that. I would love to. I would love to visit your restaurant as soon as you get it up and running, <laughs> yeah. sir. Definitely, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> do that vision as well but you know it just uh spending time with jennifer and uh dialoguing about the evolution of our uh industries uh whether it's nevada or colorado or my home state of michigan um you know it's never a dull moment i mean we have constant stories from the time that i get to visit her to uh, we put her on the plane essentially but uh i wish you all could be here i wish you could get one of our famous Rocky Mountain Caregivers Cooperative care packages, and we could have a safety meeting, and by all means, uh, you folks are invited to come out and be a part of that anytime you want. Just uh, ask for the Colorado Midnight Rider. Fantastic. Take Thanks it. a lot. We certainly appreciate that. Yeah, and, you know, th- there, there's a, these these uh, these expos and all these things that are going on, you know, like by, by the NCIA, and we just had one here in town locally this last week, and by the International Cannabis Association. That's that's basically what these things are. It's getting a bunch of people that have been in the industry for a while, and people with great ideas, and getting them together. And when you put a bunch of people with great ideas on, all in the same room, great things tend to happen. And, and it's great that they have events like this, you know, especially in Las Vegas with what's going on at the county level and the city municipalities. I mean, it's an opportunity for those that are getting ready to open up dispensaries and grow shops, you know, to interact with other people that have been in the industry for a number of years and learn, you know, what works and what they've tried that doesn't work. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the successes come from these kind of events. Yeah. And- well, partially the reason I came out here is to, is to also connect with all these vendors because we're going to have our uh, symposium in August. And the first day is going to be a huge job fair, and the second day is going to be vendor relations for dispensary, uh, potential dispensary owners. Um, and to come out and meet some of these people, that, you know, that I've met this again from like Bang, you know, Bang Chocolate and Dixie Elixirs, and, but some of the other ones like uh, Easy Trim, where basically it's industrial trimming. So, I mean, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of these kind of folks to bring into Nevada for us uh, so, that, so that we can advance our industry. 
exactly. Uh, there's so many. There's so many different aspects to this business, and so many, so many ancillary businesses that come from it. And that's what these expos and everything are about. Uh, our our uh, symposium in August, as, as Jen said, we're going to be highlighting marketing strategies and building vendor relationships, and also holding a giant uh, job fair because in August the state will have already uh, been accepting applications, and there's a lot of people who will know. You know, essentially, that they will be getting their their licensing, especially the grows. Um, as we saw here in Clark County, they they authorized eighteen dispensaries, and just last Tuesday we t- kind of touched base on this when they had their uh, approvathon marathon yeah. meeting. Yeah. Started at what eight thirty nine o'clock in the morning with a scheduled noon hour break, which they didn't take their full noon hour break to conclude at five p.m which it did not, to start the next day. Yeah, we were on the radio from 4 to 5, and they continued the, the meeting, and it went you know, till past 7 o'clock, and they finished every single one. Now, this uh-huh. month... Kind of like Oprah. Okay, reach under your seat. <laughs> and you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. Yeah. There was only that ended up that there was only what three three licensees that three got denied? that they rejected one because they did not show up and that one w- that didn't show up was number seventy something and realistically after going through the dispensary hearings I would have thought that they would have gone to you know the next day so that's- yeah well they they had it scheduled over three days so that was on the on the uh, county commission website for you know that it was a three day event and. Judging by the last one with the dispensaries, you know, we figured it was definitely going to be that. So, False advertising, <laughs> hashtag lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jen, I had to bust out the hashtag for you. <laughs> That's funny. So I, I'm super excited to be getting back to Vegas, although this weather is beautiful in Colorado because our pool party series is coming up. Yep, uh, this Sunday it starts. So. So you don't have, you don't have to sit out there in a hundred and five degree heat all day on Sunday. Come on out to our pool party and you know hop in the pool and, and have some fun with some with some like minded people and ha- listen to some great music with us. It, it's a, it's always a blast. Find well, details on our Facebook or Meetup page. Yeah, check out our Meetup page. Uh, I was actually just talking with uh, the owner of Pink Box Donuts here in Las Vegas, and they're going to come by on Sunday and they're gonna they're gonna drop off uh, lots of donuts for everybody to enjoy. So and. Uh, they are the dank. <laughs> no so, doubt. Got munchies? <laughs> Fantastic. Nothing like donuts and medication. Well, we, other than the county news, there's a lot of other city news. Um, Las Vegas, it looks like uh, they rolled out their plan. They already voted on um, their series and changes. We already discussed that. So look forward to that application process starting um, they will begin accepting land use and, uh, and licensing applications between July 8th and July 17th. There is a website, www.lasvegasnevada.gov slash medical marijuana. And you want to make sure that either you or one of your representatives attended one of those meetings. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's another thing. that The city uh, last, last week was having all sorts of... What were they? They called them workshops. They called them workshops. And what's messed up is they had their PowerPoint listed on the website. And even if you watched their PowerPoint on the website, you still had to to the very last question asked. And then you got a piece of paper saying you attend it and you can submit your application. Yeah, and and it's stamped from the city and it's signed by one of the city officials. And without that checklist that they gave you at the end of that workshop... Well, you, you, that is one of the things you have to put in with your application packet to the city. And so if you don't have one of those, you uh, unfortunately aren't going to be able to put one uh, license in with the city or you're going to have to find somebody who has one and attended the workshop that's willing to, you know, maybe join your team. Maybe, you know, offer their – so, go ahead, Jen. I'm sorry. I forgot you were still there. Yeah, I'm here. I just put it on mute. But I, have, I actually went to the workshop, and we have a number of them. So if anybody's looking to fill out their application for city and needs one of those papers, 
I have it, so just get a hold of me. Yeah, we can. We can. We uh, went to the workshops and we attended it and went through the whole checklist, uh, even asked a couple of questions ourselves. Uh, so if you do need help uh, putting in an application in the city and you don't have anyone who attended that, uh, contact us on our website, website wecan702.org, through the Contact Us, and uh, we can definitely help you out with that application. Well, North La- Las Vegas isn't the only one moving forward. North Las Vegas is moving forward at a breakneck speed, too. Um, they're, um, they're plowing ahead with the uh, land use and zoning that were introduced on the 4th of June. Their final action has been taken, and a separate 21-page business license ordinance was also addressed, introduced, and it's set for final action next month. So make sure you check the website um, and follow the various links to follow out what's going on. It keeps earlier provisions that was in the ordinance, um, limiting ad campaigns and barring drive-through windows. So you can't pull up like at a Burger King and order a supersize your order or anything. Or like at a Walgreens. Yeah, well, they had actually discussed that, and uh, they actually seemed like they would be open to it in the near future as long as, you know, this rollout didn't turn up, you know, to turn people into zombies and go crazy, you know, like the end of the world. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, they were very actually receptive to the possibility down the line. And, and it's good that they're opening open that possibility. And also in local news, Henderson City Council is moving at a turtle pace <laughs> on like uh, North Las Vegas and their breakneck. Um, their proposed changes to city code and zoning will allow medical marijuana um and they also introduced uh, location restrictions, fees, license changes, and the application process. The changes are scheduled to go before the council on July 1st. They're not being de- they weren't deliberated on that night when they met last week, but they were just introduced. Yeah, they uh, they uh, agreed to actually they made the official vote to move forward. Right. And if they're approved July 1st, the city would take applications July 7th through the 17th. So they're they're moving a little quicker on that. And the state, remember, the state has taken theirs August 5th through the 18th. Yep. So uh, any, anyway, that's uh, does that wrap up our local news? Oh, we, we still have a, a, a couple things in local that were interesting, but I don't think we're going to be able to get to both of them. Um, before the break. One of interest was uh, James DeHaven in uh, uh, the RJ. He wrote an editorial about uh, the county's permit process wanting by some. You know, those were the issues that I raised at the county commissioners about how they were going through the process. You know, and I, and, you know, before I went to that meeting, I'd say, you know, I was afraid I was going to be the most hated person in Las Vegas. But he actually took the county to task for the way that they handled it and you have some other people who have applied in various other states and went through their process commenting about how you know it was basically wrong all right well we'll have more on that after the 420 celebrity moment right now we're going to take a break and uh a word from our sponsors Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Locally owned and operated TSI, Total Safety Incorporated, has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. 
Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Uh, That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. Today in our celebrity spotlight, we're honoring Ricky Lake. Uh, As you may have seen online and all that, uh, Ricky Lake is the director of Weed the People, which is a a new documentary which is pushing for the medical cannabis legalization movement. Uh, She's an award-winning producer and actress. She's thrown herself into the debate on marijuana with the production of her documentary, Weed the People. In a new Daily Beast article, Lake explains her push for legalization of medical cannabis, arguing that it could have saved the life of a young girl who was struggling through chemotherapy. So... So it looks like uh, another another big name celebrity has seen the light. No doubt, she's joining the ranks of uh, the talk show hosts like Montel and joining the cause. So we're glad to, we're happy to have her. And absolutely, thank you for your support. And thank you, Ricky, for your support on cannabis. <laughs> now back to back to local news. Uh, you were touching on a couple of topics there before we went to break, Raymond. Yes, I was talking about uh, how um, the county's pot permit process found was found wanting. Um, I mean, basically, as you know, the county commissioners gave the representatives six minutes to present. Then people got three minutes afterwards, and then the commissioners got to question, you know, what was going on. And one of the applicants, Gene Madley, said um, they weren't sure they took enough time to pick out the bad apples. Um, you know, there were some, some issues with, I mean, because they're basically name calling, uh, some of these applicants and fraud in other states taking 400,000 from investors. I mean, these are the kind of people that actually went in front of the county commissioners. And if there had been more of a vetting process, people are saying they would not have been even one of the people that got to present. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's kind of strange because didn't they, don't they require a full FBI background check on all the applicants? Because I know, I know I went on for an advisory board on a couple and I had to have FBI background checks to make sure I had nothing in my background. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of the FBI background checks and you're not alone on them. But yeah, you would think so. And it isn't just one state. The one of the applicants in question is Columbia Care. I mean, there there's been a letter to the Arizona Department of Health and Human Services, alleged fraud against New York investors. You know, and then something I saw something about Pennsylvania. So, have they been convicted of any fraud? Has any of this actually? been proven or are these just allegations at this time these are lawsuits that are pending okay so it's not like hey i accuse you with this right there are actual lawsuits in the various jurisdictions i mentioned against this company hmm. you know and then the other one uh which i also brought up was um who is this one by uh howard stutz again in the rj Medical marijuana and casino interests continue to mix. We spoke about that last week with some of the applicants for production. Yeah, there were some applicants, and uh, they had to be removed because they had gaming licenses, and it turned out they, the, the money interest just went to, like, the grandchildren's trust fund. So. You know, and you are right, you know, and, and brought that up again. And apparently... Uh, this is what's going on. Three of the 18 applicants have some form of ties to gaming. Ties to gaming or gaming licenses? Because I don't think it actually, the code doesn't prevent you if you're a former operator or something like that. Or yeah, once if you're a former not. Uh, well, the code doesn't prevent you at all. It was the gaming, the gaming commission right. that came down and said that, hey, listen, if you hold a gaming license and you are, are put on any of these applications, we're going to... Re- 
take away your gaming license. You know, it's one or the other. You can either be in gaming or you can be in cannabis. Well, well, to answer your question, Perry, it said this is exactly the wording. Three of the 18 applicants um, are tied to someone in gaming despite admonishments from the state gaming regulators that industry representatives stay away from the business. So it's not just somebody with a license. It's one of their representatives. And then they went on to name a few people. You have Jane Tobin Moore, who is listed as an 8% owner of GB Sciences. Her husband, Barry, owns a restricted gaming license for several taverns, including Shucks Gaming and Oyster and Beans Casino. And what's interesting about the Tobin Moore is she is the sister-in-law of Gaming Commissioner John Moran. Then you have uh, Troy Hurst. He owns 10% of the clinic. He and his two brothers and father run JETT Gaming, the slot machine route for their gas stations. Yeah, they they have a whole gaming industry. They don't just they don't just have gaming. They they provide service to other businesses also. And these are just a few ones. And and then the last one that they noted is Armin Yemen Edijin. He's a manager and forty percent stakeholder holder in Integral Association. His father Alex is the president of the Tropicana. So these aren't just people that know people. These are some powerful people, and control members are the control board members are incensed. They believe their order was clear. The chairman told commissioners at the hearing that the original message would not change. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with th- those applications. I wouldn't think the third license would be revoked because it's a father son thing. The husband and wife, I think they're a legal entity as husband and wife in the states. So there might be something to say about that but i'm not so sure about the third one well what about moving money into a grandchildren's trust that uh, i'm i don't know the whole layout of it all but there's a good chance that one of these people that are in the gaming industry and has control in the gaming is actually controlling part of that trust well if the guy's got a license then that's an issue but if he does it and he wants to give his money to his grandchildren and he doesn't want to keep any of that for himself i don't have a problem with that but it's just it, it's all situational of how it fits into the into that uh, mandate by the control commission, so or the gaming commission, we'll see what we'll see what comes of it. Not only that, I think that those that are related in the gaming industry, and I and I mean no offense to anybody, but I think those individuals have plenty of money. They should allow other Americans the opportunity to achieve the American dream. You know, I and you know it may it may sound unfair, but I wouldn't want the the chairman of Chrysler to be the chairman of you know um, sex. Sachs or any of those, you know, big banks or anything, you know, I think there's enough of the pie to go around for everyone. Well, there's a lot of those issues kind of going around in the cannabis community right now. I was in touch with a group from uh, Central Alaska that I was talking to Kurt about recently, and Alaskans are very sensitive to outsiders coming in and kind of stepping on their turf as they perceive it. So uh, they, not only that, but there's a sense that the wrong people are getting into the business up there. The recreational ballot initiative is coming soon up there in November, and and uh, how do I put this? They feel like these people who were locking people up for a living using their uh, influence through not only private security contractors, but uh, private prison companies and no. people who were like law enforcement types are trying to get in to say, oh, well, we would be the, the best people to provide security and operate these businesses because we have the finger on the pulse of law enforcement here in the state. And a lot of the activists and community up there are a little perturbed with that. We haven't seen much of that here yet. We have the gaming influence instead. But still, you know, I feel like the cannabis community has always been sensitive to that and, and will respond appropriately. Mm. Well, uh, well, a lot of the security teams that were down here were comprised of ex-law enforcement and veterans. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the teams that the, the cannabis people down here chose to go with were security teams comprised of veterans because people in this industry are very compassionate and, you know, and really see the veterans, especially, you know, ones that are suffering you know, as the people that they want to help. So, yes, know, so definitely. So, you know, well, that's a good route to go with that. Well, Perry, you had mentioned the, the husband wife thing, you know, over the father son and uh, that that relationship, that ownership troubled regulators enough that they sent a letter to them. 
Uh, Hertz said he may withdraw from the casino, the jet, to focus on medical marijuana. Now, that that is an interesting statement right there. Mr. Herbst is willing to walk away from his gaming license in order to pursue this unknown of medical marijuana. Herbst sources say may withdraw from Jet to focus on medical marijuana. Exactly. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Well, uh, Republican bigwig Sheldon Adelson and his wife are getting involved, too. Uh, Sheldon is funding uh, to defeat the initiative in Florida, and his wife operates drug addiction treatments here in Vegas. And they consider marijuana the gateway drug that could lead to other illegal substances. Predictable but disappointing. <laughs> the infamous uh, gateway theory. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to move on to a little bit of national news now. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Colorado. You know, since Jen's up there, a little bit of uh, stuff going up there. Colorado law sets up marijuana banks. The feds must okay. So this is uh, out of uh, the Coloradan.com. Uh, they said, we don't need a vault. What we need is checking, he said. We're looking for a way to take cash out of the business. So Colorado became the first state to allow rec- recreational pot sales on January 1st. Uh, the Denver police issued a crime, crime alert Thursday warning of a plot to rob marijuana couriers, those who take the dispensary proceeds to pay the taxes or bills. So, you know, the, you know, the police are starting to uncover plots for them to take away this cash, all this cash, because we know that, you know, having that much cash on hand makes you a target to the criminal element. So, uh, you know... Wait, Good the move. police are plotting to rob these people? No, no, no. no. Oh, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> well, no, you know, no. that Apparently happens Apparently they're too. intercepting communications or whatever they say that are leading them to believe that these couriers might be in jeopardy in transit. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, they're going to be setting up uh, marijuana banks, and they're asking for federal approval on that. So, What else do you have going on there in uh, national news? Well, there's uh, big news out of the uh, Senate. Recently, they could follow the Congress or the House in blocking the DEA from cracking down on medical marijuana in the states that have legalized it. Uh, Senator Rand Paul on Wednesday in, in, introduced a Senate amendment to the Justice Department budget bill that would restrict DEA agents and federal prosecutors from using allotted funds to pursue providers of and patients using medical marijuana in the 22, now 23 states, now that New York has come on board, and the District of Columbia that have legalized its use. The measure, if passed, would also protect states that have enacted the more limited legalization of CBD oil. And uh, as we know, all of Nevada's congressmen and women voted for the amendment to block the DEA, and Dina Titus was a co-sponsor, and I'll definitely thank her for that. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll... Yeah, I, I, we would definitely, we can encourage you and urge you to write and call your senator to, of course, let your voice be heard and let them know that we want the House to follow the suit, and we want Nevada's delegates to be on board unanimously on this. I don't know how Mr. Reed and Mr. Heller feel about that, but from what I've gauged from Mr. Reed recently, I would hope that we have his vote, considering there was an article that came out recently about his recent... Uh, Epiphany? Yes, epi- <laughs> I, I would call it that, yeah. As a Republican, I don't want to call it a flip-flop because he's on my side, but I'm I'm happy to have have him on my side, definitely. Yeah, and his son his son was actually down at the county commission quite a bit the last couple of weeks. Uh, he's on a couple of applications and represented quite a few applications as a lawyer, so... Yes, certainly. You know, and don't forget, uh, your representatives, your senator's offices are downtown Las Vegas. Take a trip down there. Visit the federal building. You know, what a way to introduce yourself and say, hey, if you don't want to write a letter, show up. Use use social media. Absolutely. And uh, you're talking um, you're talking about the Senate, uh, the U- United States Food and Drug Administration. The FDA, I can't say it right, is currently conducting research to see if marijuana should be downgraded from a Schedule One to a lower, more appropriate classification. The review has been requested by the DEA. But wait, wait, wait. The review was requested by the DEA? Yes. But don't get ex- too excited. This is not the first time the DEA has asked the FDA to conduct such review. Similar requests were made in 2001 and 2006. Both times, no action were taken. So, is the... Wait, 
the, I'm kind of confused here. The DEA is attempting to reschedule, or they're just looking for them to do homework on the subject. The because you know you. Uh, in my mind, you know, the DEA is kind of the enemy of the medical marijuana community. They're the guys kicking down the doors of the dispensaries and this and that. And then on the flip side, we hear they're asking the FDA to reschedule this drug. Are they, so does this kind of play into the, the argument that they always give us that we're just here to enforce the law and we're trying to be on your side of this, but until that happens, is that what this is coming to? I have no new information to answer <laughs> your question other than the aforementioned statement. No, it doesn't say anything about it. And, you know, what I don't understand is, you know, the the FDA, they're doing research. What is their research going to be any different? I mean, if you look at all the research out there, and I'm not talking about the junk, junk science. I'm talking about the real legitimate research that shows the effect of cannabis on people with cancer, on our soldiers with PTSD, you know, on people with a whole host of illnesses and debilitating situations that, you know, they need this. It has been proven to be successful time after time after time. And the biggest problem, and I said it and I will continue to say it, is big pharmacy will not allow it to happen because they'll lose all their money i've always felt like big pharmacy is uh slightly afraid of people being able to grow their own medicine in their backyard and uh we saw that firsthand during last legislative session they were very actively campaigning um, against this campaigning and lobbying and donating against this cause and they almost they almost got it but you know thankfully they came in so late that we were able to uh to yeah, kind of to, stick our foot in the door. It, it was kind of the one good time that they forgot about Nevada because everyone kind of left us out here, you know, thinking that there was no chance of this passing, and sure enough, it passed. So, But, uh, you know, this just seems to me like it maybe uh, a government grabbing at free money, trying to get some grant money there, you know, to do whatever they want to do with. As if the government doesn't get enough money out of us. <laughs> no doubt. Well, New Hampshire... New Hampshire Medical Cannabis, a long way off. Many disappointed as ID card deadline approaches. The New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services officials are in the process of making the rules that will form the content of the application for issuing and renewing ID card registration, provided written certification and procedures for considering, approving, and denying an application. This is according to the rules coordinator for Department of Health and Human Services, Michael Holt. Don't you love all the titles all these people, these bureaucrats have? I'm a rules coordinator. <laughs> Wonder how much tax money they those people get screwed out of. Well, at least at least he can pronounce his. Like the one that our president and founder Jennifer was uh, appointed to. It's like eight eight words long. It's the Executive Judicial Committee on <laughs> the Use of Medical Marijuana. <laughs> we can't even remember what it is. It's so long. Yeah, it's sad when they have acronyms like that. Do you got anything else going on national news? Um, well, actually, uh, we got something on New York. Uh, New York is uh, working on legalizing medical marijuana. The, the title of this uh, article is called Answers to Questions. Uh, it's from uh, from uh, the New York Magazine. Uh, members of New York legislature have been trying to legalize medical marijuana now for nearly two decades. And on Thursday, Governor Andrew Cuomo and legislative leaders announced that they finally reached an agreement that will allow sick New Yorkers to use the drug. Uh, they're still trying to ham hammer out the specifics uh, on this one, but the bill is expected to pass this Friday, making New York the 23rd state with medical marijuana. Uh, so what happens when we get to 26? Is there going to be some kind of nationwide constitutional vote or something like that? It's, Are they going to force the issue in the Senate or something like that? How, do, how does no, that I work? don't think it's 26. Not 26 I think it's, it's 34. Two, yeah, it's two-thirds. Oh, it's a two-thirds? Two-thirds, okay. yes. Two-thirds two -thirds for a constitutional amendment. But, hey, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't I'm just looking for the simple majority. I'm getting excited. It's getting close. Oh, yeah. no. Here's what, hap <laughs> here's what has to happen in order for your constitutional amendment. The legislatures of, this, of each individual state have to call – a constitutional convention and once those legislatures vote on that it then goes up to their senate representatives who would call for a consti national oh, constitutional convention we're little a ways political off nerd then. for okay. you well let's ju let's just hope that they see the writing on the wall and it 
it doesn't even have to come to that. Let's just hope they reschedule and fix all this before, <laughs> you know, we have to have an uprising in this nation. So uh, uh, on that note, we're going to take a quick break here, a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back with some more national news. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. This is Kurt Dukach. I'm in the studio with uh, with Raymond Fletcher and Perry Haichu, and of course our producer Beach BJ. So, um, anyway, I want to go back to New York. Uh, there's there's still some questions out there. This is kind of something that they're rolling out, and you know, and we're very familiar with here in in Nevada, the rolling out of the program, and let's hope that they can, you know, maybe learn a little bit from what we've done and roll this out a little bit smoother. Uh, I just thought you were talking about rolling out, period. (laughs) But go ahead. Nah, so there's questions on, like, when they can start buying medical marijuana. After the bill signed into law, there'll be an 18-month waiting period to give the time, uh, the state time to add regulations, train doctors, establish growing and distribution centers, and the governor will have the power to pull the plug at any time if he decides that the program creates a public safety risk. So kind of sounds a lot like what we've been going through here where they're putting the whole program together because it's a whole new thing to them there. So um, on the list of things that they're going to allow pe- uh, people to use medical marijuana for in the state of uh, New York will be epilepsy, mus- multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, Parkinson's, Huntington's, neuropathies, spinal cord injuries, cancer, and AIDS. So um, one thing I didn't note on there was chronic pain. And as we know here in the state of Nevada, in most states, that's a lot of the a majority of the people on the medical marijuana problems, uh, program, that's what they're using it for. So it is one of the the best medications there are out there for pain relief and pain maintenance. Uh, I, I myself know this from personal experience. I was on that pain tri- painkiller uh, prescription drug train until I finally found cannabis and you know got on the right path and saved my life. So you know that's kind of that's kind of disheartening that they're not going to allow people to use this for pain because it is proven you know for inflammation and that and they're going to be cutting a lot of people out of the program by not allowing that. Well, how many stories do you hear in front of the county commission or the city council? Most of them have to do with severe pain. I'm not saying that cancer patients and HIV patients don't have their voice, but of uh, disproportionate amount of people suffer from chronic pain that try to find relief from this holistic medicine so we'll you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right about that and and again you know it goes back to big pharmacy you know when you take a vicodin depends on if it's generic or name brand you know what exactly are you putting into your body and what are the side effects of it 
a lot of the commercial I mean I'm sure we've discussed this many times but when you watch the commercials for the drugs it seems that on the one minute commercial for the uh, said medication at least 15 to 30 seconds of it are listing the side effects on instead of the benefits of the medicine and it, it is what it is and as they're listing the side effects somebody's dancing through a field of flowers and <laughs> just having a wonderful day <laughs> you are absolutely right you know I would love to have the ability to make a commercial make several of people actually on these quote-unquote medications and let's show these big pharmacy people that you know hey people aren't running for through fields <laughs> well this is why i fear full recreational national legalization too quickly is because the industry needs to develop a little more before we get to that point i fear that if obama came out tomorrow and he said look you know i was i was wrong you guys were right we're going to reschedule it. We're going to legalize it right now federally. A lot of the big pharmaceutical corporations that we fear so much would jump right in and uh, take in, not take control right away, but a lot of these businesses would be swooped up by them. And just like you've seen in the organic food market, a lot of the organic companies have been bought out by the larger multinational corporations that were so feared just a few years ago as a wing of this company now. And before you know it, we'll be taking drug tests for cannabis jobs. So that's why I feel like we need to just grow and develop a little more into a, a larger publicly traded, not individual entity, but a lot of these companies so that we can resist and uh, do our own research and make our own commercials and go our own way, so to speak. Hey, I'm, I'm, all, I'm sincerely all for full legalization. Look, if you, got, if you can go into any of the places on the Strip or up Fremont – and get get a, get a leg of beer or something, and be a drunken <clears throat> fool in public, start fights, you know. Then oh, someone no should be able to smoke a bowl. Oh no doubt, joint, you're preaching and- to the choir, man. I believe it. I'm just, I want to see it done, not baby steps, but responsibly. Though. Responsibly, yeah. We're we're going so fast right now that I fear that there's going to be maybe uh, that. Hopefully our national legislators won't get wrapped up in the mania of it and just do it just because they think it's politically convenient to legalize it rather than actually looking at it for the reasons why. And you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, and I also I also understand your fears of, you know, the big business getting involved in this. And, you know, I, you know, I see it. It's it, eventually it's going to it's going to happen. We know no legalization is happening. And, you know, there I've said this uh, time and time again. You're going to have the companies like Marlboro. Marlboro's already been eyeing this up. You can't tell me they're not. Sure, Philip and it's a Morris capitalist country, that. man. I'm and all for that. Yeah, but. The, yeah, they're they're going to be there doing that, and you're going to have you're still going to have all the the good micro the micro buds out there, as I like to call them. You know, all the all the you know small grows and the people who are the actually, craft breweries of yeah, the cannabis yeah, industry yeah, will exactly. survive nonetheless. Is that what you're trying to exactly. say? Exactly, because you know the true medical patients. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not going to when it comes out and there's pre rolls at your at your gas station. I don't see any of us buying that. That I see that being a complete recreational thing. And I can see, you know, the Philip Morrises and all those people growing the way they grow tobacco with tons of pesticides and tons of fertilizers, you know, basically growing the Monsanto style. You know, they have their one crop and they, they fertilize the crud out of it and then they pesticide the crud out of it so the bugs don't get to it. And then they process it and they add all this other stuff to it before they pre-roll it. Because, I read an you know, article online that said that Monsanto was trying to stick their fingers into Uruguay's market because it's the first government-mandated recreational market I don't know the, if there was any validity behind it. It wasn't from CNN or anything, but or Reuters or any of the places where I usually get my uh, my news from. But still, just the whispers of that kind of freak me out a little bit. And you know, I hear a lot of bad things about Monsanto. They're trying to ruin the world and all that. So I went and looked up their stock price. You know, they're trading at one hundred and twenty three dollars a share right now. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Next thing, next time you see uh, your story on fixed news over there, my friend, make sure you take your link down. I'll. Uh... Go ahead and follow up on it for you. Okay. <laughs> but um, we have uh, our, our last uh, story that we have for um, na- Nationwide News today. It looks like Libertyville, Illinois is starting what Vegas is just going through. Libertyville officials prepare to put into place zoning regulations for medical marijuana growing and distribution facilities. Uh, Director of Community Development John Spoden said his office has already gotten some calls from people expressing interest in opening such a shop in town, but they don't have any zoning restrictions in place yet, so they need to wait till they take effect. Now, Illinois is, unlike other states, 
is on a four-year pilot program. This went in effect January 1st, and it'll allow doctors to prescribe up to, this is interesting, allow doctors to prescribe up to 2.5 ounces of marijuana every two weeks to patients with one of 33 approved debilitating medical conditions. So when you go to the doctor, he's going to tell you how much you need, or is that just the limit? Kind of because that makes it almost sound like the doctor is going to say you can have this much. Did you say the doctor prescribes or yes. recommends? Uh, yes, the, it's hmm. a pilot program being done in Illinois, which would allow doctors to prescribe up to two point five ounces of marijuana for every two weeks to patients. Now, Libertyville is only like thirty miles from downtown Chicago. That's quite a lucrative market that they're opening up there. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a lucrative market just about anywhere you open up this oh, business. And one that's... of the largest cities in the United States. <laughs> yeah. well, well, the law allows up to 22 cultivation centers, 60 dispensaries to be spread out geographically across the state. So 22 grows for 60 dispensaries? Yep. Wow, those are going to have to be some... Big growth. Yeah, some <laughs> humongous facilities. We're talking 100,000 plus oh square foot. <laughs> dispensaries must have at least a 1,000 foot buffer from schools and daycares, cannot be within a residential zoning. Um, they need to have well-lit parking lots monitored by video surveillance, discrete signage and security provisions are proven by the Libertyville Police Department. Okay. So, so yeah, that's looking... I don't know. It's, what got me on that one was the fact that the doctor... And I guess, you know, somebody that may be on Xanax, the doctor prescribes X amount of Xanax to them, they take their prescription to the pharmacy, and they fill it up. I, I think that that might be something that the reporter misreported there because I don't believe it's a, a possible for a doctor to prescribe something that's on a Schedule 1. That's why I had so to clarify with Raymond whether the article said recommend or prescribe or how that goes. We'll see if the yeah. uh, if that article gets edited or if the comments are left or something in the next few days. Yes, this is from June 23rd, Chicago Tribune. So oh. yeah. we'll have to... It's not a. Maybe we'll come back next week with an update. (laughs) It's not a a, a podunk uh, (laughs) news. No doubt, it's not. But you know, a lot of people don't know this program, especially reporters that are assigned to this. They're 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 not immersed in this stuff, and they they see this as a prescription because a doctor is telling you to use it. When actually, when actuality, a doctor is recommending to you the you know the use of it he can't prescribe you to use cannabis because cannabis until is it gets rescheduled fed, right a federal schedule yeah. one and then that makes that would make him you know basically a felon at that point just for writing right. a prescription so so that's the way it works in this state and pretty much any other state i had that that does this is you get recommended that you have a condition that this might help with so and we can does do that for patients that not may not uh, be financially well off, or do, doesn't we can have a program like that? Yeah, we have a program to help uh, financial aid uh, for people who need help getting their cards and can't afford it that are unemployed in that. You can contact us on our website at wecan702.org on the contact us, and uh, if you qualify, we will actually help pay for your card. And be part happy of the, to. Yeah, we'd be happy to. And you know, part of the reason uh, that we can afford to do this is some of our fundraiser parties and stuff we throw, which, once again, we're throwing one on this Sunday. It's a, it's a potluck and pool party, so come Come on out, beat the heat, have some fun. You know, it's only ten dollars to get in, but that ten dollar goes to help these people who need help. So, you know, we're not we're not in this to make money for ourselves. We're a true nonprofit, and we just want to help pe- the, the patients who need help. That's so, right. Come on out and see us this weekend. Check out our websites for all of our events, uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. So, go uh, USA, <laughs> USA versus Germany this Thursday, nine a.m. Don't miss it. And I'll see you next week. Talk to you next week.